Every once in a while you have to design a 3D printed tab, something like this that might have a hole in it. If you are designing a tab like this, you end up having support underneath it, which adds a bunch of cost in production and actually makes it look really nasty underneath. So you wanna avoid these if at all feasible. But if you are making these, just make sure that you round out all of the corners of them so that they flow really well. And you make sure to also round out the bottom so that you get the cleanest under surface and supported surface that you possibly can. But again, these types of tabs can add a lot of cost to the part because you have that support and the additional labor that goes into it. And they just don't look very good. So if you wanna make a tab or an overhang part with a hole in it, you should do it like this. This is the exact same tab, but instead we made it go through a chamfer on the bottom. This way you no longer have support. You haven't really added very much material, so you don't really add to the cost of the part. And it's much more durable than that tab would have ever been. So this methodology allows you to create something really durable, really reliable, and it is pretty simple to model, but it just gives you such a better feature with the same functionality as before. So it can still slot into wherever it needs to go and the two things can connect together, but you don't have all of the shenanigans of this deal that includes extra post-processing and that kind of stuff. But this doesn't just apply to tabs with little holes in them. This can also apply to clips and clamps and that kind of stuff. If you have a part that clips onto it, a lot of people will design a clip a lot like this, where it's just sticking out into thin air. But that's not what you wanna do, especially if you're making a clip. In that case, you wanna chamfer the bottom of it as well. And what this lets you do is you're able to create something that is still durable and reliable, but again, it looks really clean, it looks really crisp, it looks beautiful, so that whatever it is that you're snapping it onto fits well, is durable, and all the rest of it. Now, of course, you have to kind of tweak parameters to make sure that these fingers flex the right amount that you want and that kind of thing when you make end up making it thicker, but you end up eliminating so much support and you create a much cleaner, more refined and final surface finish so that you can produce tens of thousands of these without having to really worry about overhangs, which can just introduce problems in mass production. But this also applies to other types of features too. It's not just clips and holes. You can also do like wire retaining loops and this kind of stuff. Wire retaining loops can help to be guiding features on the outside or the inside of the part. Again, very often people will try to do a traditional overhang because that's how it's always been designed. But with printing, you want to eliminate support. And if you wanna have these sitting up in space, you wanna put them wherever you possibly can. But you can see it's this kind of sideways loop that the wire is meant to be held through and it might snap or be tighter, or however you happen to design it. You can have an actual snap feature there. But what you wanna do is actually design it with two angles because you actually have two surfaces. You first chamfer the front right here and then you then cut in and chamfer the other edge there so that it's up and then up again. That way you never have a horizontal overhang that can sag. You end up again with this really nice, crisp looking surface finish. The feature looks great, it functions perfectly. You can make it as tight or as loose as you want to, but you get that retaining ring without having to add the potential defects of support underneath each one of these features, as well as all the labor down the line. So hopefully this video was helpful to you, showing you how to make overhang features, mounting features, that generally people just kind of misdesign because it's so easy to go into this mode of making this. But this ends up adding a lot of cost down the line and creates an inferior product. If you're using 3D printing, you wanna design for the process that you're gonna be mass producing these in. Printing can produce tens of thousands of parts, but you gotta make sure that you actually design them correctly so that you get an excellent product when it comes out that does everything that you want it to do. Have a great day, everybody.